Right, so let's get to this one, shall we? So this has got no power, apparently. So let's, uh, let's see what the deal is with this. Okay, complete no power, completely dead. That's good. So the reason I say that's good is because generally when there's no power, it's either one or two things. It's an issue with the power supply, which has probably already been checked by Console Repair London. And the other one is when it's got a short on the 12 volt line. So the reason it don't turn on is because the power supply detects a short and shuts itself down. So basically, usually when we've got a short on the 12 volt line, it's something to do with the power regulation area, phase one. Kit Digital thinks it's phase one, we'll see. Uh, now, the one thing I will say is sometimes We'll get an issue where we'll have no power and then we'll manage to get the power back by replacing a couple of MOSFETs or something and then it'll turn to a beep on beep off. Beep on beep off is never the MOSFETs. It's never a short on the 12 volt line rather. I won't say it's never the MOSFETs but it's never a short on the 12 volt line. Beep on beep off can be absolutely anything. It's kind of like the blue light of death on the Xbox, on the PS4. It can be absolutely anything. It can be a missing power rail. It can be... Uh, something to do with the RAM, the APU, uh, the retimer, pretty much anything. But sometimes when we fix an old power issue, it goes to a beep on, beep off. But that will never be a short on the 12 volt rail. So whenever I get a beep on, beep off issue, I don't even bother testing the 12 volt rail for short. Because it's just never the case. If there's a short on 12 volt, the power supply will always shut itself off. Why did you just void your warranty? Uh, what warranty? <laughs> These are not under warranty. And this definitely isn't mine, so... Uh, this belongs to a customer. It's been sent in for repair. Anyway, warranties... Um, warranties can't be voided just because someone else has worked on the device. Magnus and Moss, 1975. Andy, welcome. Uh, Andy, welcome, mate. We're all welcome. Funnily enough, if you talk about self-repair on the Microsoft forums, I'll ban you. Genuinely. Right, this is the digital edition, by the way. I thought I should mention that. This is the old digital edition. Yeah, but to be fair, it's actually... Um, it's actually against the law for a manufacturer to void a warranty just because you've opened your device. That's why if you look on the newer consoles, there's no warranty sticker. The reason on the PS4 because they just take the piss. On the PS5, but they just take the piss. But the newer consoles, the newer Xboxes, there won't be a warranty sticker on there. It's just a plain sticker. You got banned from the forums. Censorship at its finest. Censorship at its finest. Right, so first thing I want to do is check the 12 volt rail for short. So I'm going to put the multimeter to beepity beep mode and test the 12 volt rail. Yep, we have a dead short. Cool, so I'm going to make this really quick. I'm going to use some voltage injection on this. And uh, we'll use the thermal camera to find the short. I'm going to hazard a guess at phase one myself. I can't see anything, but I'm going to hazard a guess at phase one. It looks fine. So when we've got a short on the 12 volt rail, the short is usually around this area here which is where main power comes into the uh into the board from the 12 volt rail here it goes to this chip here which is the ncp4205 uh, that's a power management chip and then it comes from here down to these rails here let's hope it's on phase number one because usually we don't get an issue when phase number one dies with beep on beep off after it after we restore the or after we relieve the short Let's hook that up to there then. So I've got a thermal camera here and basically when we've got a short, the short is going to generate heat because all of the power is pulling down to ground through that component. 
So we use a thermal camera, and that's going to help me to find the shore pretty easily, or usually anyway. And as you can see, it gives us a rough idea of how hot it is on the crosshair. So you can see my hand is the hottest at the minute. It's not great. It, it's not the best thing in the world. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop one probe on ground. So I'm going to permanently ground that. And I've got the bench power supply set to 1.4 volts. So let's pop the other probe on the 12 volt rail and let's inject some voltage. I'm going to focus on this area here because that is generally where the short is going to be. And we're drawing 1.3 amps. And I'm not seeing anything. Okay, I need to try and basically get that to stay in place so as my hand's not in the way because otherwise it's going to pick my hand up as the hottest. There we go. Hmm. Alright, that's just where my hand's been by the look of it. Might be on the far left. Right, I'm going to increase voltage. Because we're not seeing anything yet. So I'm using two volts now, and hello, there we go. That looks like it's starting to warm up. Okay, so this is phase, this is what I call phase one, and hello, didn't see you earlier. A little bit of a burnt component there. So this could actually be this MOSFET here, which is what I was pointing to when I first started injecting voltage. So let's go for a diode reading on there. So I'm going to pop red probe on ground and I'm going to test uh, this pin here. And we get 0.9 volts. Let's flip the leads around. And uh, we get open line. Okay. So that seems okay. It seems to be absolutely fine. So let's test these ones. And um, we get with the red with the black probe on ground, we get 0 0.021 volts on that MOSFET there. That's phase one. With red probe on ground, we get 0 0.02. I think we have a winner. I think this is the damage component. And we get open line on this one. Black probe on ground, open line. Phase number three. Open line. Um, 0.62 on that one. Hmm. Right, let's test phase two again. Ah, we are getting 0.62. Okay, just a connection issue. Sometimes I do read open line when we've got another bad component. But that one is 0 0.021 volts. So that's almost a dead short to ground. So if I go into continuity mode, and there you go. So that one shouldn't that that pad there 
this pin here should not be shorted to ground. Um, so this, I believe, is the gate. So this is the source on the MOSFET. This is the gate, and this is the drain. And the gate shouldn't be shorted to ground. So that is, as Chris just said, knackered. So let's remove that, and we'll see if it clears the short. We do have a burnt... Uh, capacitor just there so that is a little bit of an indicator that it's in that area so I'll remove this this MOSFET and see if it clears the short and I'm going to gamble it probably does That's just a mark from when I was probing, that's on that MOSFET. So I don't think there's actually any visible signs that this is short, it's just failed short, that's all. I don't think it's got hot enough to do any damage. There we go, so that's removed. Um, let's just test again for a short to ground. So, let's pop that on ground. Short gone. Short is gone. There we go. So if we go into diode mode now and we test that same pad that we were testing before, we should get around about 0.6. Yeah, 0.529, but the board's still a little bit warm. So, yeah, that is reading absolutely fine now. New fret bothers your uncle, and it becomes power on and off. That's for you, you bastard. <laughs> Don't wish that on me. I bought one. I bought one off eBay the other day, and that had um, an L power issue, and then it went to beep on, beep off. That was phase, uh, no it wasn't, it was um, it was these two farm MOSFETs by, by the um, TPS51916 and the TPS51916 was liquid damaged, so it fried the RAM, so that's, that's a candidate for a RAM replacement at some point. At some point in the near future, that is a candidate for a re uh, RAM replacement. Right, so the part number for these is TPN. 8R903NL. You can buy them from Moza, DigiKey, AliExpress, RS Components, all the good places. They're not expensive. I can't remember exactly how much they cost, but they're, they're really not expensive at all. Especially when you buy them in uh, packs of like 30, uh, 50 and 100. Showing off his counting skills. <laughs> right, I'm not going to replace the solder on this. It's completely unnecessary. It's not liquid damaged. It's uh, just a faulty component. This is probably the most common component to die on these. They're not the most reliable in the world. Right, so let's add some flux now. Come on. Surface tension. Thank you. Quick reflow, press it down, make sure it's got nice contact. And done. I'm still cheating on King Bow. Yeah, I'm near enough out of that stuff though. 
I won't be buying any more. Oh, okay, dog. Let's give that a clean. Even though it is no clean, we don't need to clean it. There we go. Alright, let's test again. And no short. Short is gone. Diode reading on that MOSFET is 0.56. Board is still warm though, so it's not going to be an exact reading. Should be around about 6.6, .6, but you do get an increased resistance when the board is warm. So, never expect a dead accurate reading if your board's warm. Right, let's give the IPU a clean, and then this should power on. I like these nice simple fixes. Let's get rid of that thermal paste. Let's add some fresh MX4. Moment of truth. Boom. She's a working. What about that bad capacitor? Uh, nah, that's fine, mate. It's not shorted. <laughs> Chris is gutted. <laughs> Right, well, that's just crashed my uh, capture card, but um, I'm just logging into uh, the console anyway, so it's all groovy. Now, hope he catches fire. That one's for you, mate. <laughs> controller needs an update. No. How do you know my controller needs an update if you're not even connected to the interwebs? Look, like, seriously. Can't I cancel that? Ugh. I'm not updating nada. Go away. I'm not updating my controller. You can piss off. Pick up the Wi Fi. There we go. I know I'm giving my um, Wi Fi password out. It doesn't matter. There we go. Uh, no, not updating. No, that's not my job. Sorry. Cool. All working. It's a password to subscribe. It used to be. Uh, I've got rid of that router now, though. Nice quick fix. Yeah, these ones are nice and simple. That's why I like them. Um, they're not. Well, they're not simple for. You know, if if you've never if you've never done one before, but there is a lot of information on how to diagnose the MOSFETs and actually figure out which one's wrong. Uh, so they can be nice and simple, um, but they can also be challenging as well sometimes. Lung screw the PSU. <laughs> you just want me to have to pay for a customer bloody console, don't you? It's slight fucker. Right, so time to get another console. So I'll take this one back in the house, do my little thing on the computer, log it all down, and uh, I'll grab the next one.